<laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> Thank you. It was, um, it was a, a surprise to us, but the minister invited uh, Murray and I to come in and, and gave us... Murray invited... Us, or the, the minister, finance minister, invited us to come in and gave us more than he had offered in time to listen to us and um, has committed to our meeting with him and other ministers of the province to talk about how we can think about the whole of the needs of the poor in our communities and to work more closely together. We've, we, we want to partner with, not always be uh, in opposition to, but we also were very firm in what we said. Yeah. For many Christians, we have just begun the season of Lent, a time of repentance and fasting to focus our hearts on our relationship with God and each other. If we fast, it is a choice as part of a spiritual discipline. Today we are here to speak up for those who do not choose to fast, but sometimes find them forced to fast by the lack of resources to feed themselves or their family. A painful reality, not a spiritual discipline. At the heart of our commitment as Anglicans are our theological commitments symbolized in the scripture text from Micah 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I speak to you as a church leader representing 30,000 Anglicans in 80 parishes across the diocese, some of whom you've just heard from, who recently voted in their annual parish meetings to encourage the provincial government to put food on the budget with a $100 supplement. Last fall, a number of us joined in the poverty diet, living on the, what comes in the food bank. I was one of those participants and I was shocked at how quickly, within a day or two, you began to feel not well. No fresh fruit, no fresh vegetables. We all discovered a deeper empathy for those for whom a diet, that diet, is a weekly and even daily reality. Last spring, I was also a rapporteur with the ISARC social audit, in which we sat at the front lines of people in various settings across the province and listen to the frontline stories of people who struggle on social assistance and on the food bank diet. Their stories are shared in the book Persistent Poverty, Voices from the Margins, and it's a wonderful, wonderful in the sense of getting you right to the front lines and hearing the voices of those we're standing here for today. The Anglican Diocese of Toronto is deeply committed to addressing the issues of poverty and homelessness. We've been engaged for decades on the front lines through ministries of those who struggle with homelessness, domestic violence, in Flemington Park, in downtown Toronto, in small rural communities and in the suburbs. We have met with MPs, MPPs and cabinet ministers to express our concerns and to offer partnership wherever our voices and our hands can be effective for poverty reduction. We are honored and pleased that we had the opportunity to meet with the finance minister just a few minutes ago. I know that Michael Pru was here a few minutes ago and spoke with you as well. We're thankful for Sherry DeNovo and we had also invited the Conservatives to be present, but I'm not sure that anyone was able to come today. Today. Ever. Archbishop Colin Johnson submitted a pre-budget brief to the government back in January entitled Fulfilling the Promise of Poverty Reduction, in which we've urged the government to act on deepening crisis of hunger and poverty. Ontario's child poverty rate jumped to 15.2% in 2008, up from 14.1% a year earlier, says the Ontario Campaign 2000. That means that more than 400,000 children and youth under 18 live in poverty. As well, the number of people forced to turn to food banks to ward off hunger jumped 28% in the last two years. 
now numbering more than 400,000 people, not just people on social assistance, but also the working poor. <clears throat> the government is committed to a specific poverty reduction target, specifically that of uplifting 25% of Ontario's children by December 2013. The halfway point of that five-year plan is almost here, yet as mentioned above, the most recent statistics paint a disturbing trend. Food prices are rising quickly, food bank lineups continue to be longer. We do need action now. Some will point to continued recession effects and deficits as a reason to delay implementing the actions we commend. We believe it is not a question of not always of finding more money, it is a question of setting priorities for the health and well-being of Ontarians and of being willing to share. In a province where the wealthiest 10% now get 80, 80 times more income than the bottom 10%, those affected by hunger, how can we say that we can't provide more? Minister certainly is in sympathy with the moral argument and with the need. We recognize that he's in a tough time economically, but we are standing here today to speak up to say as Ontarians, we want that change to be made. So we urge the government in its budget priorities to include $100 added to the social assistance budget in order to at least begin to address some of the needs for healthy food, healthy bodies, for a healthy Ontario. Thank you.